Hello investors, my name is Mitchell Harmer and today I'm going to be running you through the account setup process for a trust account. Congratulations and welcome on board. So there are four easy steps for us to follow here. Obviously complete your application forms, collect the certified identification and then look to send the um, application forms back to us here at COSEC. And lastly, follow through the McCrory Cash Management account setup. So let's get started and go through each one of these steps. So firstly, the application forms. The beauty of this is, when we first spoke with you on the phone, we would have gone ahead and populated most of the information on your behalf. But should we have missed something or perhaps need something more, you would find a highlighted section on the document. So if we look through the documents here, the first section of section one, the trustee type. Now, generally, if it's an individual trustee, there'd be a minimum of two beneficiaries. However, some people have a company trustee, such as, you know, for example, Mitchell Harmer Proprietary Limited would be the trustee for my trust. In that case, I'd click the company trustee. Moving on to section two, the trust details. Now you can have two types of a trust, obviously. You can have a regulated and an unregulated. In the case of a regulated trust, you would have a self-managed super fund. In this section, we would need the highlighted sections to be populated. If not, we haven't already received them already. Alternatively, you can have an unregulated trust. It can be a family, charitable, testimony, uh, or discretionary. Now, these would have already been obtained in the initial phone call, but had they not been, we would highlight that on your behalf. Moving through to forms, Section two is obviously the main source of funds. Now this section is always gonna be superannuation savings, unless you have a family trustee or a company trustee of that nature, whereby you would want to use savings. But that would have been outlined in the phone call already. Section three is company details. Now this is for our clients who want to have a company trustee for their trust. So it would be Mitchell Harmer, Proprietary Limited, um, trustee for the Mitch Harmer Self-Managed Super Fund if that makes it easy. And the highlighted sections would be of which we need to fill out. Moving on through, further through the application forms, we uh, come to section four, the applicant details. Now, this is where we take the beneficiaries information or the directors. In the case of uh, two beneficiaries for an individual trustee, we will need two forms of um, information for both the beneficiaries. Alternatively, if you have a company, you can just have the one form. Moving further through, we come along to um, the uh, section seven, which is the chess sponsorship, sponsorship section. Now, this is where we would obviously try find your portfolio and uh, do a transfer of existing HIN. It's a very easy process. All it requires is the current sponsoring broker, account name, uh, account designation, and all the other highlighted sections of the application to be populated on your behalf. Sometimes we don't always have access to this, so it's always good that we have it do, um, done on your end. And obviously with anything, you put your signature down the bottom there um, for the account holder one and signature and date. Moving further through, section two, the McCroy Cash Management Account. Obviously, you know, had we received your tax file number and all the relevant information on the initial phone call, we would have gone ahead and made a McCroy Cash Management Account on your behalf. In the case that we didn't receive that, you know, we can easily enough revisit this in uh, step four of our process. Moving forward, we come to the last page, section 11, nearly finished with the application form. So section 11 just requires you to sign it, be it two beneficiaries for an individual trustee or the one company director. So the highlighted sections will be outlined for you. Fantastic, so that is step one of the application process completed. And now the beautiful thing is we'll move on to section two, which is collecting the certified identification. Now, with a trust of this type, we require a number of forms. The first being certified ID of your license, for example, or your passport. Now, we need this to be certified by a legal professional, such as a legal practitioner, um, attorney, or even a court position, just, such as a justice of the peace or a magistrate. Now, we need two forms. So the passport and license would be ideal. Because we're making a trust account, we'll also need a copy of the trust deed. Now, the sections that we require will be outlined in the documentation of which you receive. In the case that you have a company trustee, what we would look to do is have you collect a company extract. And in the information you've received, there would be a link to which you could go to download that. 
Now that is all that we'd require in terms of the certified ID. Obviously if there are two beneficiaries, we would require two forms of ID for both of the beneficiaries. But in the case of a company trustee, we'd only need the one for the director. Okay guys, moving on to step three, nearly complete with the process. So step three simply requires you to return the information and all the required documents back to us by the express post bag of which you'd already received. Very simple, the address is on it and we look forward to getting that in. Step four, the Macquarie Cash Management Account. Now guys, revisiting this, had we initially grabbed all the required information of you on the first phone call, we could have gone ahead and populated this. Now Macquarie is one of the most reputable financial institutions and it's a great opportunity to be a part of it via the Macquarie Cash Management Account. So if we hadn't received all that information, all that we'd look to do is make it once we've received your documents and from there, we will be sending you an email from Macquarie that would ask you to verify all of the information such that your account can become active and become ready for funding. Not to worry though, most of that would have been processed on our end. So guys, moving on from here, that's the four steps of your account application process. What would happen from now? So open markets would look to process your application once you've received all the required documentation and Macquarie would become active once you've process the information on your end upon receiving the email from Macquarie that you would receive. Now, guys, we're always here to help. And Cosa, if you have any questions, you can either contact myself or any of my teammates from 8.30 to 6, Monday to Friday, and we'll look to help you through any of your issues. And again, congratulations and welcome on board.